Let's face it, we all have at some point down the line been trapped in the cycle of keeping poor habits, whether it's procrastinating, doom scrolling, staying stuck in a rut and completely wasting our life potentials. We somehow blame the environment for keeping us small. And while our environment plays a big factor, there are ways we can navigate our life decisions and get ourselves out of a place we absolutely hate. So I'm going to be sharing with you all the habits that have once ruined my life and why you're going to avoid this at all costs. One, letting social media destroy my self-esteem. Now, social media is one of those double-edged swords where if you use it the right way, you can literally grow your career and build the life of your dreams. But if you use it the wrong way, then it will keep you stuck in this perpetual cycle of questioning, why am I not enough compared to people around me? And the number one mistake that I've made for years and years and years is trying to prove my worth to a group of people. And I'm sure that in a logical sense, we we know that we should really work on ourselves, but when we are normalizing using social media for hours a day just to consume content, it is hard for us to stop snooping through your friend's story. The one thing that I completely fail to understand is that everybody is in a different life situation. So looking at somebody your age wearing a Chanel handbag, then questioning how many more months do I have to work nine to five to save up $7,000 to buy a Chanel handbag for myself is completely useless. And that comes down to the second point, which is being so desperate to prove myself to a group of people who are just not worth it. I'm sure that if you still have Facebook, you might have kept your friends from high school or from university and those friend list are just very distant acquaintances. But at some point, we have this ego in us that wants to prove how far we have progressed, how far we have leveled up and show those people who once mistreated us how much they're missing out on. And while this pettiness does feed your ego, you have to seriously evaluate if this behavior will get you paid long term or not. As a very naive person in my 20s and growing up extremely sheltered, the only concern that I had were concerns concerns that were not high value. And that really was, how do I look perfect so that I can attract the right friends using my social media facade instead of coming back and asking myself, how can I show up in a way where even if there is no social group to attend, no people to please, no places where I have to put on a mask, how do I still embody the energy of somebody that doesn't give a fudge and is genuinely attractive by just being herself? Three, caring so much about envious judgment. I'm going to be honest with you that if somebody says any passive things that put you down, it is most likely that they envy what you portray. And even if you're not really making internal progress, but your social media feed or how you look externally is what ticks off a society's checklist of success, then you will naturally draw envy from people. One of the hurdles that really confused me before launching Pat's platform is constantly being told, why don't you just do OnlyFans to earn money? Who's going to listen to you because you look so young and you're not as smart or as qualified as other people. Now, even if these kind of comments are supposed to be good intentions, but if it makes you feel disempowered, the minute that you receive these kind of judgments, I recommend that you thank the experience and carry the attitude of, I don't give a fudge about your judgment and I'm going to keep leveling up me in the way that I want to do it. Four, falling into the 24 seven productivity trap. Now this mistake is something that we perceive as the ultimate goal that we want to achieve, that we're supposed to treat ourselves like a productivity engine that keeps getting outputs every single single day. But the truth is we are humans and we have our own progress rate. When you see somebody making 10 times the progress that you can in the amount of time that you are given, it is not your responsibility to ask yourself why you can't do it, but it is your 100% responsibility to nurture your momentum. Meaning that that person who's progressing faster than you probably spent more time working on themselves and momentums to do things faster. And therefore, instead of beating yourself up and trying to get things in a short amount of time, it is best to keep up the discipline by just getting enough done for that day, but staying consistent with that momentum over a long
long period of time. Whether it's working out, building your abs, swimming 40 laps in the ocean water, deadlifting 70 kilos, the more familiar you get with the process, the faster your improvement becomes over time. And that's exactly the same with working. While it may feel heroic, like you're the protagonist of your story by working so hard and having everybody tell you how hard you work. But if that comes at the expense of your mental and even physical health, then I recommend that you take a step back and allow yourself to not receive so much of these external validation, but take care of your inner well-being so that you can be productive in the long run rather than being extremely productive in the short term and then repeating this cycle of never feeling satisfied because you're forcing yourself to perform too fast and too soon. Patience is always a virtue and as long as you can always be patient with yourself, you'll be surprised at how fast you start to improve in every area of your life and ironically be productive in that way. 5. Prioritizing other people's judgments on how I should live my life. Giving my power away to other people outside of me in my early to mid-20s was a normal experience and no wonder I always felt un worthy and imposter syndrome like I cannot sustain the success that I gained for myself because I genuinely didn't feel like I have autonomy over my own life. There were times where I would level up into the best version of myself feeling absolutely independent and free of judgments and then somebody with more earning potentials, more wisdom, older in age comes in and tells me that I should live life this way and makes me feel like I could take shortcuts in life and become successful sooner and while that can be true in some cases it majority of the cases, success comes with you trusting your intuition. Of course, implementing different advices help along the way, but your life is your life and you are the one that has to refine the approach in each and every day. If somebody is not in your mind or in your consciousness 24-7, they are not going to know what mistakes you actually made, what you need to work upon, or which direction you should grow towards because they're not living and breathing in your shoes 24-7. And all these advices come from their perspective on life. And my question to you is, what does feeling empowered feel like to you? Does that feel like chasing success by getting a job at a prestigious company that doesn't align with your passion? Does that feel like starting a business that you think is profitable for you when it doesn't align with your true purpose? Of course, earning tangible money is a great thing, but earning tangible money at the expense of your happiness is another thing. The more you trust your intuition, the more you'll have guidance on how to pursue that career that fulfills you, but also is profitable for you long term. And that actually comes from shutting down every single advice that doesn't make you feel good, that makes you feel like you have so much more to do in order to be worthy of success. You may have a gap between where you are and where you want to be, but you never should need to feel that you're not doing enough today to be where you want to be. Six, getting triggered by literally everything. Now, I'm sure we can all agree that this world is full of craziness. There is so much negativity and it's your responsibility to filter out what you want to experience on a day-to-day basis. No matter how elevated, how high vibrational you are, you still have a chance of bumping into somebody that is so angry and resentful towards life and they start projecting that onto you. Now you're going to ask yourself, are you going to question why that happened or just accept that this is a part of life but it's not going to be a part of my experience, meaning that I'm not going to get triggered just because somebody swears at me just because somebody tries to harass me or just because somebody tries to put me down. What I learned at the beginning of this year is that we don't have control over who is going to hurt us. Any day somebody can come up to you and yell at you, swear at you, curse at you, call you names, make you feel powerless and there will also be a time where even your own friends are the people that make you question your worth and that's the point where I ask myself if this default environment that I'm aligned to right now is like this am I going to choose to stay in this physical environment or am I just going to let it be and remove myself to experience better things that are out there for me and the choice all lies within you instead of trying to stop somebody from projecting negativity onto you it is best to just shut the door, set the sacred boundary and walk away without giving a fudge and continue to live your best life. Mistake seven, settling for relationships that didn't fulfill me in the long run. Now this is really tricky if you are in the actual circumstance because I didn't even realize myself that I had a subconscious belief that I didn't deserve the best of every area in my life and therefore every time I tried applying for jobs, seeking out friendships and then eventually seeking out romantic relationships, they were all 
small fractions of what I want, but not the exact, exact thing that I truly want. And it looks something like this. If I met a guy that I'm absolutely into, we have this beautiful connection, I'm so drawn to him, attracted to his ambition, then he would be too busy to give me the full commitment that I want. But when I finally met people that wanted the commitment with me, in the long run, our beliefs, our values, and our goals don't align. And even if there is genuine love, the love looks more like appreciation rather than passion. And I've always wanted to be in a relationship where I'm so passionate about the guy and me. I really respect him and respect me. We elevate our lives together and we're doing interesting things together. And that was something that I have to admit I never got to experience until recently. And in that same time frame where I started to experience things going my way more, even my career, my fitness, my health, and the way I approach life is starting to align more as well. So what I'm trying to say is that your romantic life is interlinked with the quality of every area of your life. If you can get your fitness, your mental health, your emotional well-being, your discipline, your productivity all harmoniously balanced together, then it's likely that your love life will start to fall in place naturally as well. But because for such a long, long time in my life, I let my environment dictate my worth. I let people, friend groups, relatives, family, friends tell me that you don't deserve to have the best of everything because you are born into this certain environment. So therefore you must settle for this kind of life. And that is not true. I want you to really implement habits that will shift your subconscious belief that you deserve to have the exact things that you want in life and everything can harmoniously fall into place for you without you having to chase or try hard for it. And finally, number eight, chasing quick fix solutions for every area of my life. And now that ties back to point seven because I was not satisfied in any area of my life. During my teens or my early 20s, I would start to take all these wrong approaches just to get the result that I think would bring me fulfillment. So for example, because I was so desperate to just have some money, I would get a nine to five job, yes. But the main reason why I got that nine to five job in sales is because I was owing money to somebody that was in an MLM scheme. And the biggest mistake was actually getting into the MLM MLM scheme in the first place because I wanted the reassurance that 9 to 5 is not going to be my forever way of earning money. And while I haven't really gotten myself into random hookup situations that I haven't reevaluated, I still went for the quick fixes in a different way. So instead of allowing myself to learn how to enjoy solo dates, learn how to spend a long period of time just with me, learn how to cultivate the best relationship with me, whoever is interested in me from work, I would just literally respond to that. So let's just say there were four people all at once at the time and I had no interest in three of them, I would still entertain the three of them for the sake of curing my abandonment wound. I wanted to feel wanted, that there can be people flirting with me, giving me attention, texting me and life is not so blank. And that is an absolute mistake. What my current self would have done at that time was to work on my inner self-worth so that I'm finding creative ways to make money that allows me to live the life that I truly want and not have to ever question, how's it going to happen? but rather just build a very amazing self-concept where I'm confident that even if things are not working out yet, tomorrow and the next few days, I'm going to be closer and closer to the exact relationship, the exact lifestyle, fitness, body, health, and everything that I want. And these are the brutal mistakes that once ruined my life that I want you to avoid at all cost. I really want you to know that your life is not going to be over if you delete your personal Instagram account. This might be a bit tricky when we're talking about business accounts where we're monetizing our products through Instagram. But in the case of just having a normal social media account to connect with relatives or friend groups, your life is not going to be over if you disappear from what is not relevant to your growth and just come back and work on your internal evolution. You will still get everything done in the most harmonious and balanced way. Even if you're not productive 24 seven, your life will unfold in the most miraculous ways when you listen more to your intuition, connect with yourself, learn from your experiences and stop giving a fudge about other people's judgments and what they want for you. While a lot of times people say they want the best for you, but they are not the center of your life and you deserve to be on your own pedestal. Your life is going to be ironically much more peaceful and successful outward
outwardly when you stop reacting and getting triggered by all the pettiness that is always going to be there. The job is not for you to try and fix the pettiness. The responsibility is for you to walk away from the pettiness for good. Now, I promise you that you will have so much fulfillment when you stop settling for friendships or romantic relationships that are not meant for you. You don't need to hold on to something that makes you feel knots in your stomach. It's okay to let go because there are better things out there for you. And finally, taking your time to do things patiently and slowly is not going to hinder your growth. In fact, it's going to accelerate your growth. Yet the more you find quick fix solutions, that's when you perpetuate the cycle of constantly coming back to square one. You don't have to chase anyone or anything to be where you need to be. You just need to cultivate your stillness and trust in your own powers. Again, guys, this is Pat's platform. And if you like this video, feel free to subscribe to my channel and also let me know what kind of topics you would like me to cover. I'm so glad that we are growing on this journey together and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.